Okay, so some people have been watching my videos recently and they've noticed that I keep changing my Neelys artifacts. See, I've been using a four piece Flower of Paradise Lost set a lot recently and I know it can be quite confusing. People are now commenting that they don't even know what artifacts they should be using now. So I thought I should just make this video and using all the knowledge I've gathered so far, just concisely summarizing her different builds and helping you decide what to use. Okay, so the first type of player, if you're just like a normal free to play player, or basically someone who didn't get lucky and you don't have her signature weapon, maybe you're using something like Iron Sting instead, which I don't have, but this has a similar stats. If you've got Iron Sting or Xyphos or those kinds of weapons, your HP is never going to be high enough to be hitting the limits of this HP buff, which if you didn't know already is about 74,444k HP. So you're nowhere near this, which means you want to stack as much HP as possible. So if you're that sort of player, it's very simple. You do want to use the new set and the two piece tenacity of the middle lift. This will get you an extra 40% HP. And I think in our soft stack goals that we published a while ago, you do want to aim for around 61 to 62k HP with Hydro Resonance. And just like this, even with this 40%, you're still nowhere close to that 74k HP, but you will still be able to get quite a decent reaction buff to your team. If you want to know what kinds of substats to look for, Obviously, since you want to maximize as much HP as possible, that means you want a lot of HP percent on your flower and your plume. And then getting some flat HP in the other three is helpful. And then with most needy builds, you do want a bunch of energy recharge and EM as well. Now, another type of player, if you do have a signature weapon, which gives a ton of HP, and you want just a well-rounded build, you want a build that should work in all settings and a very flexible build, then you also do want to just use this set. This is because with this 40% HP and with the key, it's actually not that hard to get to that HP limit of this team buff. And you can see here, I'm basically exactly at that. And I don't even have the best HP percent stats on my flower. So this is the build I can recommend for most players. Like I said, you're reaching the maximum buff here, and that's in addition to the actual keys passive, which gives quite a decent amount of EM based on her HP. So those are the two most common builds for Nilu and two of the most common artifacts you should aim for. So you might be asking, why do I not really use this mix set these days? Here's the thing, if you're like a super tryhard and you're someone who maybe wants the most optimal of optimal builds you want to try aim for potentially the most fastest runs possible then actually you might want to aim for this flower of paradise lost set okay so there's actually a few reasons why you might want to go for this the first reason might be quite obvious but in the abyss you can actually get hp buff card which is 25 percent hp and actually if you have around this 71k hp with the flower of paradise lost set if you do pick up that 25% HP buff in the Abyss, you actually do end up around 74k HP. So that brings you to the limit of this buff, as opposed to if you already had 74k HP, you would be sort of wasting that card. Whereas now you have 74k HP and you have this set bonus effect. Now having said that, additional HP past 74k HP does increase the buff here. You're basically getting just a few points of EM to the team, it's very negligible. However, whilst it also isn't very relevant to boosting the raw damage of Nelia and Kokomi, the HP card could be useful for boosting Yelan's personal damage. But of course, you'd rather be boosting Yelan's raw damage whilst bringing Nilu's HP up to 74k. So that was the first reason. The second reason is kind of just how these blue teams can work. Ready. Let's go. So as you might have known already, in a double hydro, double dendro team like this, to break it down simply, the majority of your reactions will be done by Nilu and Kokomi. 
Obviously, the exact percentage is kind of pointless to calc since it depends on your execution, the enemies you face, and, and the exact timing you use things. But needless to say, in general, the bots we can say in the team, Kokomi does the most dendro reactions here. Nilu still does quite a lot with her ring. So what does that mean? It means if you're boosting up Nilu's HP, you're basically lowering her reaction damage in order to boost up Kokomi's damage. Whereas if you're using a Flower of Paradise Lost set and you don't have as much HP, you're lowering Kokomi's bloom damage, but you're massively increasing Nilu's bloom damage. And actually, as it turns out, the difference isn't that big and they can be quite comparable in practice, especially if you factor in that Nilu's ring is very effective in the beginning of fights. And also as you move from enemy to enemy, Nilu's ring is very useful for creating reactions. So really, you could say even without a HP card in the Abyss, in these sorts of double dendro teams, it's actually pretty comparable. Flower of Paradise Lost set versus optimizing their HP. And lastly, I do have a third reason, which is that the domains for these artifact sets are kind of out of the way. Whereas actually another advantage is that you can farm for Nilu and her teammates in the same artifact domain. And this isn't just for Kokomi, you could use these EM artifacts if you're using Xing Chou or if you're using Ayato or even if you're using Barbara and they can take the EM pieces and Nilu can take the HP pieces. Note, like I said, I probably wouldn't recommend using this if you don't use the key because you probably do want as much HP as possible. Oh yeah, also, if you want to know what good Flower of Paradise Lost set pieces means, in terms of what stats to aim for, since obviously you're not going to be getting close to 74k HP without the extra HP from these set bonuses, that means you are going to want to stack as much HP percent and flat as you can. So you can see here I've got 800% is actually a good artifact for this set. I've got 700% and I've got EM here and I've got 400 and some energy recharge here. These are actually pretty good artifacts. Now as you can see it's not easy to farm these Flower of Paradise Lost set pieces. You can see even with these pretty good flat rolls I'm still not even at 71k HP which is actually my goal. So it does require a lot of farming and honestly, if you aren't getting these flat HP stats and you're not getting like 20% here, which means you're probably not even getting 70k HP with Hydro Resonance in a team, then that does lower the effectiveness of this set a lot. Whereas with the mix set, it's a lot easier to meet your goals and it's less stressful trying to get EM and ER on your pieces. So in conclusion, it can be a lot more difficult to farm for this set. However, with that third point, you can farm for both Nilu and the teammates at the same time, so that can help. So like I said, if you're dedicated to the grind and you do want to farm maybe the most optimal set as possible, then just put the time in, put the resin in, try to grind out some of these pieces and you can get a good set. As for me, I've already got a pretty optimal set for Kokomi already. I've got a lot of energy recharge and EM and decent HP, but my Nilu pieces can still be improved. Like I said, I'm still trying to reach 71k HP and my energy recharge is a bit low. I would like to get this closer to 130, 140, but it's a work in progress. Hopefully this video cleared up some questions you might have had and thanks for watching.